at Fair Park. I'll hand you now to our match commentator, Alistair Lamont. Thanks, Jonathan. Good evening again, everyone. The police at Hamden is at stake this evening in the first League Cup quarter final of the weekend and an enthralling tie and prospect, as the guys have been describing here at Fur Park. Both sides come into this one off the back of defeats that ended impressive unbeaten runs but do remain in good positive fettle as they seek to secure a semi-final place. Motherwell for the first time since they went on to actually lose the final in 17-18. United haven't reached that stage in 16 years. A chance for both to put that right here tonight or one or other certainly to do so. Uh, the players are out and ready to get us underway. Motherwell will kick us off going from left to right as we look at it from the back of the main stand. They're in their traditional claret and amber. United in a chain strip, white top, tangerine shorts, white socks. And we're off and running at Fir Park, as uh, Jonathan was describing. A big crowd out here to watch this one. Around about 8,000 expected. Uh, and that includes a, a really impressive travelling support uh, for United taking up both tiers of the stand across to our right hand side but it's Motherwell making the early running down the left hand side with young Wilson uh, moving forward and it's going to be a throw in down near the corner flag as the home side look to get the, the big home support right behind them from the very off as uh, Wilson lines up uh, a long throw by the looks of it just taking a few yards of a, a run up and then hurls it into the penalty area. It's met by Stevenson, though, in the near post. He gets it out of the penalty area. It's back in as uh, Mother will look to try and create. It's bouncing around. They can't get rid of it just yet. It's uh, whack goal was by Dan Casey. That one's blocked, and uh, United will try and come forward on the counter, but uh, the attempted pass from van der Sanne wasn't good enough, and it's quite comfortably cut out there by Palm again. Mother will uh, have it back once more on the left-hand side. A minute played at Fir Park. Uh, still goalless as uh, Casey midway inside his own half plays out to the right hand side for O'Donnell first time ball forward and then uh, picked up by Miller good link play there with Robinson O'Donnell just checks back he might have uh, taken that on but he switches play wonderfully instead and it's nodded down inside the penalty and that just ricocheted uh, back off Maz when he see as he took the shot and it came off him, it's behind for a goal kick, we played almost a couple of minutes here, bright start to the game, especially from uh, Motherwell in the first couple of minutes, but it's Motherwell nil, and the United nil. I think it's important when there's energy in the crowd to try and use that when you start the game, to kind of carry that momentum that they have onto the pitch, Motherwell have started bright, they've started aggressive, I think Stephen O'Donnell could actually have fed Lennon Miller in, he checked back out when it was on, just to put the ball in behind Ross Graham and allow Lennon Miller to get ahead of him, but certainly a positive start from the home team. Goal kick then to be taken by the visiting goalkeeper, Jack Walton. It's uh, Motherwell who win it, though, Robinson. Losing out to Sibbald, who feeds it forward. Trafanovski unable to bring it under control. He had a couple of really good chances to get an equaliser up at Tannadice against uh, Rangers last weekend, but uh, passed up both of them. And uh, that statistic that Jonathan mentioned earlier on about not having had a, a single shot on target would have been uh, a disappointment, clearly, to the United manager, uh, Jim Goodwin, who, once he'd made a couple of tactical tweaks midway through the first half, uh, they made it really difficult for Rangers, but they were already a goal down after Rangers had threatened to run riot in that early period in the game. 1-0 it finished. United throw in, back the way it goes to Graham. Graham goes all the way back to Walton. It's going to be chased by Miller, as Stephen says. He is playing a little bit more advanced this season, uh, just in behind the striker, along with uh, Maswanisi tonight, uh, supporting Zach Robinson. It's United, though, in possession over on the right-hand side, as uh, Adi Boyega plays it forward to Stevenson. Back with Adi Boyega, right-hand side clips it forward, Casey just takes a touch in the chest, thinks about the back pass to the keeper but then turns and plays it back upfield to Maslonisi, he can't bring it under control and now it's Stevenson, he was looking for Trapanowski but it doesn't get there and uh, Motherwell win it back and it's back with uh, Aston Oxborough, all in red this evening, away to our left the home keeper, as O'Donnell who's uh, started the season pretty well 
can't find a teammate though, and it's picked up here by Perry on the halfway line, left hand side. Tries to switch it to his opposite wing back. Stevenson on loan from Liverpool nods it down to Arik Boyega. Better possession now from United, and here's Babunski getting on the ball, and Ferry calls for it. And Ferry gets it left hand side, which quickly closed down by O'Donnell, who sweeps it forward. Four minutes in, no goals as yet. As, uh, it's picked up in the middle of the park and fed forward for O'Donnell. Graham's there just ahead of him. O'Donnell trying to get round him, but Graham's big and physical enough to be able to hold him off. And it's behind for a goal kick. Four and a half on the clock. Motherwell nil, United nil. There's a chance here for Dundee United. Ferry with a poor touch. Really good play by O'Donnell right down on top of him. And then they both played over the top. And good play by Graham just protecting the ball, letting it go out for a bye kick. But it's been a decent start, lively enough. I think Stephen O'Donnell splits opinion amongst some Motherwell fans, but you're right, Alice, I think he's had a really good start to the season. Got himself a goal, you didn't see tonight, he's right up for the challenge, he's sharp, he's crisp. For me, Stephen O'Donnell is one of these guys who's constantly underrated. I don't know if people take him for granted. I mean, I think he did brilliantly in that period he got into the Scotland team. Didn't, you know, did himself plenty of justice at the Euros. Didn't look massively out of place for a great game against England, didn't he? And... Um, yeah, I think he's a, a, still a, a really good performer. He's one of those players where people tend to look at more of his negatives as opposed yeah. to actually enjoy his positives and think about how well he's done. I think he's a scapegoat at times. Yeah, here's Miller. Tries to feed it forwards for Mazzonisi with the outside of his right boot, but it's cut out by Gallagher back at Motherwell, who's, uh, I think, uh, complaining about the hard time he gets from the Motherwell fans when he comes back here. I haven't heard, heard any... Adverse reaction so far this evening as Ari Boyega puts a dangerous ball into the box. O'Donnell has to deal with it, he gets the header in, and Oxford is able to keep it from going behind. And it's uh, good defending there from O'Donnell with uh, Trapanowski just lurking just behind him. Couldn't take any chances. Six minutes played, no goals. As the guys are saying, lively enough start. Neither side really able to stamp their authority on the game as yet. There's uh, Oxford up. Puts the ball on the ground and then launches it long up towards Robinson. Mazzonisi trying to get onto it now as well. But uh, across goes Gallagher. Oh, there's a few boos now for the former whale man. As Doherty now tries to play the diagonal, looking for Trapanowski. Just didn't quite get his angles right there. And Oxborough comes to the edge of his box and gathers it. As uh, Casey now picks up into the feet of Halliday and back the centre of defence here. One slow on by Gordon, Mazzonisi, oh, it's a wonderful touch, Mazzonisi, can he get the shot away here? Block behind for a corner by Ari Boyega, although I wonder is it, I'm not sure it's an offside, or certainly it's a free kick in, in the end to Dundee United. I'm not sure what the infringement was there, Alan, you thought maybe it was a, a, a pull? Possibly, yeah. I didn't see it, but I just saw the, the touch from Mazzonisi, which was terrific to pull the the long ball out of the air, but uh, he got the shot blocked by Adi Boyega, but it was an infringement in there somewhere, and United get the free kick. Seven played, and it's still nil-nil. As uh, United get the ball down, it might have been a handball, been told my year by the producer, who I'm assuming has seen the pictures coming in as well. Uh, in the studio, here's uh, Ferry, left-hand side, into Doherty, now back with Ferry, and now Gallagher, just inside his own half. Looks up and plays it straight ball forward. Van der Sander just nudges it on to Sybil. Sybil was taken out there by him again. And it's a free kick to the United. It's about 35 yards from goal. Left of centre. Decent position this. Probably just a little bit far out for a direct shot at goal. But uh, certainly a, a good position to try and create something here. Yeah, well, I think Babinski will come over and take it. Yeah, I think it's been a good start from Dundee United. Lovely play there from Gallagher. Good ball through. Splitting the lines there and... Sibyl's on to it and he's brought over a chance for Dundee United. Ferry and Babunski over this, in fact Ferry just slides it forward for Trapanovsky. Trapanovsky gets a, an angle there and he gets the shot away, but he should have done a lot better than he ultimately did. Well off target with a curling effort, going for the top corner, but he was a good two or three yards over the top there. He created the, yep. the room for himself well, Alan, but he just got the final execution wrong. I think he hits it too early. He throws a dummy to the two defenders, both by it, and he's got room to drive in, maybe three or four yards before hitting the shot. He hits it very early over the top of the bar. First uh, opening really for United is uh, 
lifted forward by Gordon, didn't uh, make perhaps the contact he was looking for, but it gets to O'Donnell, who knocks it back to Paul McGinn. McGinn now down the right-hand side for Robinson. Robinson holding up the ball and waiting for his teammates to arrive. But they were not perhaps moving the ball quite as quickly as the supporters wanted them to, and it's back with Gordon, who goes all the way back to Oxford on the, the edge of his penalty area. Nine minutes played, Huddleston nil, Dundee United nil, as Gordon comes back again and uh, picks up possession and then plays it back to Oxborough once more. United don't want them to kick it like that. They'll, they'll love this all night, United, if they do that. They squeeze the game, Dundee United, because they want it kicked long. Because Robinson's not the biggest. If you watch United, they'll step onto the game, they'll try and make sure that goal kicks are hit long if they can, or it's back to defenders, they're hitting it long to Robinson because they'll fancy their chances. Which means them and Mother will win the ball in the middle third. Andy Halleridge had four touches, he's had three negative passes and one forward pass. So when you get a chance to play it forward, play it forward rather than the ball, go back to your goalkeeper and get lumped up the pitch, you've got to think. Yep, there's uh, Casey out to the right-hand side for O'Donnell, lovely flick on there for Miller, he was taken out off the ball, O'Donnell, but play continues with Miller playing the forward pass. As uh, Mother will try to make the co combinations in the final third, but... Uh, Eventually, Dundee United pick up possession again, and O'Donnell's back on his feet. He's, uh, he has a, a glance at the fourth official there, as if to say, did you not see what happened off the ball? He's still having a, a go at the fourth official down there. Somebody's going to cop it somewhere along the line. Oh! That's a free kick has gone away of Dundee United in the middle of the park. There's a late challenge there by Zarkovsky. And... Uh, the free kick given just to Dundee United about just a few yards inside their own territory, which will be taken by Doherty, plays it short to Graham, just inside his own half still, and out to Trapanovsky left-hand side. Stuart Kettlewell is the latest to be having a pop at the, the fourth official down here. I noticed the, the fourth official's not named on the, on the team sheet, and I noticed the SFA have stopped listing the fourth officials on their website, which is uh, highly frustrating for the likes of me probably of no consequence to absolutely anyone else but uh, United have been caught offside and it's uh, a free kick to Motherwell deep in their own territory and uh, just to finish that highly exciting fourth official chat I don't recognise who it is down there. Watch you sit on your hand that. <laughs> free kick to Motherwell then just outside uh, their penalty area the uh, game could perhaps do with a little spark to just uh, kick it into life. It started quite brightly, but uh, it is a, almost a, a sense of both sides who are playing very similar formations, cancelling each other out just at the moment. We've played 12 minutes and uh, no work for either goalkeeper to do as yet. It's out for a, a throw-in on this near side, the United left, midway inside their own half, to be taken by uh, Ross Graham. Hurls it down the... The left wing, Paul McGinn gets his head to it. Halliday goes back the way again. This time to Aston Oxborough from the halfway line. Oxborough returns it over the halfway line. O'Donnell won't reach it, it breaks off Ferry. O'Donnell still looking interested, but a little back heel there for Ross Graham finds Ferry once more, but O'Donnell's pinched it, and now it's Miller. Miller spinning on the right-hand side, going back the way to the halfway line. The other old fans absolutely adore this young man who's come through their academy and uh, has all the, the makings of a real top-quality player by the looks of it. But here's uh, van der Sande for United on the, the left flank. Now Ferry, infield to Doherty, making his first start of the season, actually missed a period at the start, they missed the, the group stage and so on with a uh, calf injury. Last season was kind of plagued by injury as well for the United skipper, but he's back in in place of Kevin Holt tonight in that uh, midfield berth that Kevin Holt was, by all accounts, doing well in, but uh, Jim Goodwin replaced him uh, at Tannadice against Rangers. We clearly felt you needed a more natural midfielder in there, and that's certainly what Ross Doherty is. Here he is in possession once more, about 15 yards inside Motherwell territory, but back to Adi Boyega and now Gallagher. Gallagher square for Graham, 13 and a half in, no goals. Here's Ferry on the halfway line, comes in field, finds a good ball, and now it's uh, Babunski. Babunski plays it on to Adi Boyega, and he tries to slip in Stevenson. It was a poor pass, though, from the big defender, and uh, easily cut out there 
by Wilson. Back to Oxborough, who just hoofs it long again. Again, that suits United. Yeah, it's meat and drink for Ross Graham there. He just nods it down to Doherty, who can try and get United moving forward again. It's Babunski once more in a pocket of space, looking to pick a pass. He goes back to Sybil in the edge of the centre circle. Now Graham once more. Graham forward. It's good play from Trapanovsky, but he's just... Oh, I've just kept it in, actually. It's out. No, he hasn't. I thought he just managed to keep that in, having uh, probably given himself too much to do. He was uh, in a good position had he managed to do so, but uh, balls out for a throw. And 14 played, and it's still 0-0. I think United have had the best of the possession in the last seven or eight minutes. They have imposed their style a little bit more on the Motherwell than Motherwell have done to Dundee United. But again, to go back, Andy Hullard, I think he's did six or seven touches. They're negative. Play forward. When there's nothing on, try and get it into Masvanisi, try and get it into Lennon Miller. By going back to uh, Oxford, all he's going to do is stomp it forward under pressure. So they have to be a little bit braver in the middle of the pitch, Motherwell. That uh, defeat at Pataudry was just their second of the season. The other one came against Rangers, and that was a narrow one as well at Hamden. As uh, United, though, pick up on the left hand side. That was uh, also another unbeaten run that came to an end against Rangers, they hadn't lost since the opening day of the League Cup against Falkirk who of course still remain and uh, visit Celtic Park on Sunday, live commentary lovely of that touch. lovely first touch yeah, from van der Sander just inside the penalty area forward comes Stevenson, and then from the right the ball comes in, breaks away of Trapanovsky, can he get the shot off he always wants to come back in the right foot and he goes for the near post and it's well taken by Oxford, the first save of the night but that's exactly what he did against Rangers last week. He wants to come back on that right foot when perhaps he could just get the shot away on his left. Yeah, it's a wonderful touch initially from Van der Sander and eventually it comes to Trapanovsky and you're right. I wonder if he could have hit it first time. Tries to get it on his right foot, runs round it to get on it yeah. and it's a comfortable save by the keeper in the end. I think Stephen O'Donnell had done his homework because he actually showed him outside. He didn't want to go on his left foot and he was jumping around the ball to try and get it back onto his right foot and couldn't generate the power at the near post. Back with uh, Walton, he gets it up to the halfway line, but that's intercepted by Halliday. And Maswanisi will keep it in on the left hand side, but he can't find the one rushing Wilson. And United have it back, and as Stephen says, they are just dominating possession just in the last few minutes. Played 16 of them, and uh, no goals, but that effort from Trafanovsky, the first on target so far, but Oxborough dealing with that one uh, pretty comfortably. United still have it at the back, it's Graham midway inside his own half, finds Sybil, Sybil a nice ball forward taking out Maswanisi who's trying to get back at Doherty, over to Stevenson on the right hand side up against Wilson running at him, Maswanisi still tracking back to try and help his team out but United keep possession as Ari Boyega plays it infield to Babunski there but it's a really poor attempt at a pass from him, who you'd expect better of the North Macedonian all the way through to Oxborough now bowls it out to Casey, now Gordon on the edge of his own penalty area, he plays it forward looking for Robinson but it's an easy win there and there for Gallagher and now Sybil's well challenged though by Tarkovsky, Motherwell can maybe get something going here down the left hand side, Miller looks to try and play in Mazzonisi but uh, Ade Boyega's there before him, that was a, an opportunity it seemed for Motherwell to try and build something but Miller couldn't find the killer pass, but here they come once more, it's Robinson just nudging it back to Miller out to the right-hand side for O'Donnell, takes a touch, plays a low ball, it's not a good delivery from O'Donnell on that occasion, and it's easily dealt with by the United defence, clearing their lines well into the middle half, a good play from again to get it back to O'Donnell, and he plays it into Zarkovsky, and you hear the home fans appreciation for that good play from McGinn, the ball out to Mazzonisi, is kept in by the attacking midfielder and he's got it back again from Wilson here on the left hand side now he plays it into the back post looking for Robinson just a little bit too much height on the cross there and it's uh, drifted behind for a goal kick we've played 18 minutes at Fir Park in this uh, League Cup quarter final tie and uh, John Beaton is coming across to have a discussion with his uh, fourth official it's something wrong with his uh, communication system so uh, a chance for both Stephen and Alan to give their assessment of the opening 18 minutes here nil nil I think Dundee United have been the better side and, and Stephen touched on that hard he's going back more than forward but I have to say Sybil's got on it and he's looked forward you know if United can get Babunski Trafarovski on it as well Van der Sander as well looking lively up front and United their game plan is to make Motherwell kick it long 
We've only got Robinson up there and it's food and drink for the likes of Gallagher and Graham. No problems at all as far as United are concerned so far. I also think United look a little bit more comfortable with taking the ball at the back. There's more rotation in front of them. They can see what their options are. They're better building their play, whereas Motherwell's a bit panicky square and then back and then thump forward. So just take a little bit more composure. Sometimes play forward, but play a safer pass forward. Well, there's another long ball forward into Robinson, who's uh, dealt with by Graham, and then knocked forward by Ferry. Trapanovsky brings it under control, left-hand side here, battling away with McGinn. McGinn uh, has done well, and he's actually won the throw-in for his side. Another really honest, hard-working uh, player who will give his all every single time he turns out. And uh, Stephen O'Donnell will take this throw in just down below us, about 20 yards from the corner flag, right hand side, as Motherwell tried to come forward. Halliday offers himself, but O'Donnell decides against using him. And Strafkowski, steady goes down the right. Miller's been climbed all over there, in fact, McGinn has been climbed all over there by Ferry. Either way, it is a free kick to Motherwell, but 10 yards inside their own half, and a chance for uh, Stuart Kettlewell to just. Uh, have a quick word with Stephen O'Donnell there about something. Um, Motherwell probably not entirely happy with the way the game is uh, panning out just at the moment, but it is still goalless as uh, the short free kick is taken by him again to Gordon. Now Casey, and Casey will go long. Motherwell uh, still trying to play pretty directly. It's picked up in the end by Miller, but he can't find a teammate, and here's Doherty field uh, to van der Sander, who's uh, dropped way off the front just for the moment Adi Boyega in the right back position for the moment plays it to Babunski a little Wonderful. shimmy away from Zavkovsky there in the middle of the park but he can't find the pass and Miller intercepts and gets it back from Zavkovsky and then Robinson's taken out of play by Doherty and it'll be a free kick to Motherwell inside the centre circle just inside the United half 21 almost played and still no goals not too much excitement, it has to be said, as much as we built we this game up. gave it the build-up as well. Always the same, honestly. Yeah. Well, every faith that it'll eventually spark into life, a goal would do wonders for it, as uh, Casey again goes long looking for Robinson. He gets a knockdown from Masvonisi on that occasion, but he can't gather it in, and Gallagher clears, but can't find the teammates out of play, much to the delight of the home fans here. And it's a throw over on the far side. I think Motherwell are playing off scraps. It's whenever done the United turn the ball over, they're a little bit sloppy and they're poor touch. Motherwell are looking to capitalise on that, but in possession, United are moving the ball really, really well. It's just that lack of concentration of that poor choice. United are giving Motherwell wee opportunities in the game. Wilson with the throw in here, left hand side for Motherwell. It's uh, nodded on by Zafkowski. Gallagher's next to it, and it breaks for Adi Boyega, who just hoists it up to the halfway line. Uh, eventually falls for. Casey here to come forward, plays it infield for Lennon, tries to get it back uh, from Casey but the 1-2 doesn't come off and Ferry picks up for United and he'll start motoring down the left-hand side leaving uh, O'Donnell in his wake, it's a poor pass again from Babunski who again is a, a player who I was looking forward to seeing last week for the first time in the flesh and he didn't really uh, cover himself in glory and again this evening so far in the first quarter of the game he's put a couple of passes astray for no apparent reason anyway mother will have it and uh, Mazzonisi I'm not sure he entirely meant that but Halliday tries to slip in Robinson just too much in the pass Gallagher sees it back to Jack Walton back in the United keeper's arms quarter of the game played for Park and it's mother will nil Dundee United nil Mazzonisi never meant that no <laughs> it's a complete fresh air I think he was trying to help it on. Yeah. But the fact that he missed it, the ball went on itself. But I think he was trying to flick it around the corner, but completely yeah. missed it. But that's Motherwell's best opportunity. Again, Andy Holiday take a little bit off the ball, just roll it into the space and allow Zach Robinson to get a shot off. Graham thumps it forward up to Trapanovsky, who's forced back the way, all the way back to Declan Gallagher, who's just outside his own penalty area and tries to pick a pass, which is all well, it is cut out by Masmonisi, but it breaks for Doherty. And now across to Are Boyega, right hand side. Doherty comes and takes it off him, just crossing the halfway line. Wants a bit of help and he gets it from Sibold. Sibold in the middle of the park, plays it forward for Trapanovsky. Quickly closed down by Gordon, who wins it for Zavkovsky. Bad ball from Masmonisi. And uh, Halliday was quickly closed down there by van der Sander, but it's safely back with Oxborough. It's a little bit scrappy, just generally at the moment. As uh, Miller gets it to O'Donnell, right-hand side, can't find the ball back to him. And 
Ferry steps in for the visitors. Doherty back to Graham on the edge of his own penalty area. Plays a square to Declan Gallagher and uh, back once more with Ross Graham. Sybil now midway inside his own half and Graham once more. Moves away from Robinson and then Ferry picks up and goes back to Walton. Quickly shuffles out to Gallagher who in turn finds Sybil. Right hand side is Adi Boyega. Pokes it into the feet of Doherty. It's a rather fortunate one too there, Adi Boyega. Come, came off the motherwell player. But uh, it worked out quite nicely for United as here's Ferry picking up on the left hand side. Now back with Babunski. Babunski into the feet of Van der Sander. He can't find a teammate. And it breaks for Robinson about 10 yards inside his own half. O'Donnell in support, right hand side. Played kind of short, but he's managed to knock that through for Masmonisi. Masmonisi just outside the box, right hand side, up against Graham. Can he get the shot off here? Oh, he tried to cut in, and it's good defending, you'd have to say, from the young centre back. But Masmonisi just showed too much to him and uh, allowed him to get back in and make the challenge when uh, he might have got the shot off as a firm challenge there by Gordon on Trapanovsky uh, full bloody challenge and uh, it is a mother will throw it came off the United player it's given away though in the middle of the park and now Stevenson will pick up it's uh, possession being coughed up by either side just at the moment United have it through Ross Graham, who made that good challenge there a moment ago on Maswanisi. Could you get the shot off there, Maswanisi, on the right foot? I was going to say, he actually created the space for himself. I know Ross Graham's left footed, and he probably would have put his, le uh, his long left leg out to block it, but get the shot off, don't give him a second chance to go back inside. Doherty lifts it forward, it's a lovely ball, Trapanowski's offside, saved anyway by Oxborough. Looked like he maybe had just gone too early, but it was a lovely spot from Doherty in the Execution of the pass was terrific as well, but Trapanovsky flagged offside and uh, Oxford are making the save as he got the shot off. But it would have, uh, wouldn't have counted had it beaten the keeper. And remember, we don't have Vart in operation tonight, so it does remain after 26 minutes, Motherwell nil, Dundee United nil. And I think that's what Docker gives you that Kevin Holt would. You know, he's a, he's a natural midfield player, nice pick out there. Trapanovsky just goes early, where it looks like he's gone early anyway. We never know. No, it looked pretty tight actually. It looked like he'd, uh, by the time he collected the ball, he was, you know, miles away from the the mother will defend us. But when, that, when the ball was kicked, difficult to tell. But anyway, it's uh, cleared by Walton up towards the halfway line. In goes Casey and then flicked on uh, by Miller. The ball spending a lot of time there just at the moment as Doherty though gets it down for Sibbled. And then Graham onto Ferry. Jim Goodwin at the edge of his technical area. Urging his side forward down that left hand side. Doherty switches play for Adi Boyega, who takes it in his stride and will try and uh, create something here. Out to Stevenson, right hand side, almost at the goal line. Poor attempt at a cross. It's blocked by Wilson, but Stevenson will try again this time on the left foot. Headed away by Casey from inside his penalty area. The ball is allowed to bounce. Graham gets out to the left hand side for Ferry. Ferry cuts away from O'Donnell nicely. Ferry on the left foot, spins away also from ah. Strakowski and it chips it and Oxford has the back pedal. Uh, eventually manages to clutch that one. I'm not quite sure it was heading on target in the end. It wasn't what he meant. He was looking to try and pick out a teammate, but he got that wrong. And uh, the danger is averted once more. 27 and a half played, still nil-nil. Yeah, you're right, Alistair. It wasn't a meant cross, that one. You know, definitely, just if we say that, another one again. A little bit slack. I think the problem we've got is a, looking at both sides, Stephen, they, they don't want to lose it instead of going to go and win it. You'd like one of them to take a chance and say, we're going to win this game, but it looks like are we playing for a mistake? Are we playing for, you know, unless it, someone gives you a piece of brilliance and lashes one in for 25 yards, it's going to be a really tight game. And you feel as if when there is a goal, then it will open up a little bit, a bit more. But until that point, you're right, they're just feeling each other out. Here's Trapanovsky left-hand side, up against McGinn, just checks back to Ferry. Ferry, one touch to get out of his feet, then swings it in, Oxborough comes, doesn't take it cleanly first time, but does manage to grasp it before any United player can pounce, so more or less on the penalty spot. And he just rolls it out to Liam Gordon, who, of course, uh, was part of the St Johnston side that won the cup. Well, yes, but the League Cup is, is what I was <laughs> referring still, to. But yeah, if you say, haven't you won the Cup? 
<laughs> in this context, uh, but absolutely the uh, cup double that year. Unbelievable uh, achievement that for St Johnston under Callum Davidson. Motherwell free kick quickly taken. Does show that for clubs of this size, it's definitely achievable in cup competitions. Halliday taken out there by Ari Boyega, uh, and it'll be a talking to there for the defender. Free kick midway inside the United half now for the home side. You're right, Alice. I think when I was at Livingston, we managed to win it in 204. And I still think people look at the cup and think, how are Livingston on that? It's, it's a wonderful opportunity for a club, but go and grab it, go and get into that semi final. It's nice like tonight would put you in a position to do it. When you come up against someone who's evenly matched with you, can you go over the line? Can you win the game? Find a way to win the game. Performance irrelevant. Find a way to win the game, and then you never know what happens in the semi finals. Mother will free kick then, uh, just left the centre. Bodies up at the edge of the penalty, looking to get on the end of this. As Halliday swings it in back post, and Graham's able to just leave that as there's no Motherwell players in at the back post. A breakdown in communication, it appears, because Andy Halliday's holding the arms out as if to say, well, why were you not in that area attacking it? Because uh, that's where he had aimed, but uh, safely behind for a, a goal kick as far as United are concerned. Half an hour gone, and it's still uh, a rather dreary goalless uh, affair at the moment. As uh, Trapanowski chases another one, but, but you, you see the play. difference here when United, United get out at the back because the Mullerwell don't press up the park. But when Mullerwell have got a bye kick, United press, so the Mullerwell have got to kick it long to Robinson so and they win the ball back. So to counteract that, I think United have a plan and they have a yeah. rotation and they have a uh, patterns of play to get out. Mullerwell don't, they throw it to Liam Gordon, he looks up, so he thumps it forward, gives it to Dan Casey, thumps it forward. So there has to be something in front where they move about and rotate, something they're bound to have worked on, but tonight it's not coming to fruition. Throw into Motherwell here, taken by McGinn, down the line for O'Donnell, who can't bring it under control, and out for another throw, in this time to United. Yeah, the game definitely needs something just to spark it into life, you feel. Uh, United throw 10 yards inside their own half to be taken by Ross Graham. Down the left it goes, flicked on by Van der Sander. In steps Casey, but he doesn't get there and it's uh, bouncing about. It's given away though, it's Robinson picking up for Motherwell, driving towards the United goal. Gallagher looking to hold them off, still it's Robinson. Robinson does well initially, gets the shot off, but it's straight down the throat of Jack Walton, but good play from Robinson to hold off a couple of United defenders, got the shot off from 25 yards, but it's going to have to be a real good strike to beat the keeper from that kind of distance, and it remains nil-nil. I think he's in the side ahead of Moses by because of his physicality, because he will have to fight with Ross Graham and with Declan Gallagher, but there's the weakness. If you can turn around, you can face Declan Gallagher at 1v1, get the ball out of your feet, use your turn of pace, whether it's Masvanisi, whether it's Zach Robinson, there's something there for them. Yeah, I read something about um, it be, uh, Stuart Kettlewell saying he has to do more than just score goals uh, to, <laughs> to be in my team. Uh, and I suppose that says something about, you know, the, the kind of work ethic perhaps he needs. He's talking about having to work on his, uh, when he's not in possession of the ball, of his runs off the ball and so it's on. There's physicality holding up as well. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. something, it's not just about playing around the edge of the game. You've got to get into the defenders and you've got to hold the ball up, get your team up the pitch. But... Uh, Often you would say, well, if, it, if a striker scored any goals, then he should be in the team regardless of the rest of his play. Stevenson with a good ball in, but uh, Trapanowski just unable to turn it on target. His mother will come forward. No, no free kick though, as uh, Zach Robinson is told to get to his feet as uh, United pick up once more. 12 minutes to the break, still no goals as Ferry has it left hand side, trying to move away from O'Donnell. Comes in field. Zarkowski comes out to cover and he has to go back the way to Gallagher. Gallagher just with a short ball to Babunski, who's dropped off the front to play out to the right-hand side. Ari Boyega, deep cross, will have to be chased here by Trapanowski. He's done well to keep that in. O'Donnell can't uh, take it off, and the cross comes in outside of the right boot. It's a nice effort. It's curling away from the keeper that uh, Oxborough is able to just come to the edge of his six-yard box and clutch that before Van der Sander can make anything of it. And it's still nil-nil. It's a good ball. You'd expect your striker, your main striker, to be across the front post there. Makes his run too late. Nice ball in. 
And it was pretty inventive, certainly, from Trapanovsky. Uh, the two North Macedonian tens for United, trying to be the creative forces. Here's Motherwell uh, in the shape of Dan Casey out to the left-hand side for Ewan Wilson, forced back the way by Stevenson. And now it's Oxborough who clears long, one for Robinson to contest again. Uh, comes off Graham and then uh, Ferry's here to just tidy up as it almost broke kindly for Miller. But uh, Walton quickly bowls it out to Declan Gallagher. Now Ari Boyega into the feet of Babunski on the halfway line. Ari Boyega makes a run down that right, but Babunski turns and goes into the feet of Van der Sander instead. Back to Babunski once more as Van der Sander's taken out of play off the ball by Gordon. Here's Gallagher. Gallagher just clips it to his left to Graham about 10 yards inside his own half, 10 to play in the opening period, still no goals as uh, Ferry goes back to Graham once more, we'll have uh, live commentary of uh, Rangers against Dundee tomorrow after St Mirren Harps in the league it's a 3 o'clock kick-off, here's Trapanovsky left-hand side, clips it in, Oxborough gets a glove to it and pushes it behind for a corner it was a good hand in the end, there's a couple of United players lurking in, in and around the six-yard box, and probably an important touch from the keeper there yeah, really good play by United. Initially started by Gallagher with a wonderful pass. And then United are away. And it's a decent ball in. The keeper has to get a hand on it. Oxborough push it away for a corner. The cross will go Ferry to the right-hand side. The left-footed player to perhaps curl this one in right on top of the keeper and try and create some pressure. And it's a loaded six-yard box. There's one, two, three, four, five United players and half a dozen Motherwell players plus the keeper inside that six yard box and they're all at that near post area in comes across and up goes the keeper to grab that one and the chance is gone you know what United take a chance as well the man for man at the back there but it was a poor corner really was as you rightly said there's five in that box they'd all go under the ball easy take for the keeper and Motherwell off the hook balls up the other end now as Motherwell uh, try and come forward and uh, uh, Stevenson. Yeah, talking to there for Lucas Stevenson. I'm not sure. Yeah, if he's I think he's delaying the restart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is a yellow card. It should be. Yeah. So, you know, there's no point in John beating run over and waving his finger. Yeah. Because he's he's let his team away with it. Or he's let Dundee net off with it. Yeah, he was just preventing Motherwell taking the the quick throw in. If that's what they'd wanted to do, and it is just a ticking off though for Stevenson rather than the yellow, which uh, I think by the letter of the law it should be. But uh, it's an opportunity for Liam Gordon to get forward and Dan Casey but uh, O'Donnell goes short with the throw in and then gets it back from Zavkowski down at the goal line now he's closed down by Trapanovsky I'm not entirely sure that's uh, what O'Donnell was intending but uh, it's going to be a throw in down near the corner flag to Motherwell um, as I mentioned both Gordon and Casey are uh, up there McGinn's just outside the penalty area and uh, Ewan Wilson is the furthest back for Motherwell but as they try and Get the ball into the box here from O'Donnell's throw in almost at the corner flag. And it comes towards the near post. Gordon couldn't get there. It's half clear, but it comes to Dravkowski who drills it in to the near post. And Ross Doherty has to turn it behind. Now it's going to be a Motherwell corner. Eight left and a half. Still near nil, but Motherwell have a chance here. Well, they were short. Dravkowski second ball. And that's probably what they should be doing in open play when the ball goes to Zach Robinson. Can't win the first one, win the scraps. That's exactly what they've done. Don the United scrambled away for a corner. Lennon Miller to take here, right footed from the right hand side. Mazwanisi offers himself short, but Lennon Miller waves him away and swings it in onto the penalty spot. Well won by Gallagher, I think it was, inside the penalty area, and then hacked away by Stevenson up towards the halfway line. And uh, returned there by Wilson, but United have it forward once more. Trapanowski is he able to keep that one in, yes, but couldn't quite get the better of Ewan Wilson who manages to get it back to Oxborough who clears up towards the halfway line but that's won by Graham and now it's Babunski right hand side, Stevenson in support about 10 yards from the goal line on the Liverpool player back once more to Doherty into the middle, O'Donnell wins a good header gets it well clear but Ferry then plays it back to Doherty, 30 yards from goal right hand side is Adi Boyega Doherty again available, it's time to go slightly back the way United, then it's played to the left-hand side for Graham, midway inside the Motherwell half, low ball in for van der Sander, this gets the studs to that one, but the offside flag is up, and a semi-promising move comes to an end, and it's still goalless, six and a half minutes left of the first period. 
It's been largely disappointing, I would say, Stephen. 38 minutes in the clock, not being great stuff. Trapanovsky's had an effort at goal, and that's really been about it. You know, Robinson had his shot, nothing more. You know, fairly tepid stuff, you'd have to say, for a quarter-final tie with so much at stake. But uh, neither side really grasping the nettle. At this particular stage, as uh, Graham looked up a massive armful of... Uh, Robinson's jersey there, but the just the, I mean the assistant referee's looking straight at that, but he's given the, the throw and unless both players were at it, I couldn't see the opposite happening. But uh, it is a throw into United. Graham takes it down the left flank. Cross comes Casey to hammer it forward once more. Graham's underneath it and just uh, nods it down the left once more. Ferry helps on up to the halfway line. One by McGinn ahead of Van der Sander, then. Doherty gets his header in. Well, it's been nicked by Van der Sander. Now, United on the counter here. Played to Stevenson. Not a great ball from Van der Sander, but Stevenson almost makes the most of it. Babunski, right-hand side now. Clips it into the area. Van der Sander goes to try and attack it. Gordon's there first. Gets it back out. Only as far as Babunski, though. Right-hand side now. Adeboyega into the near post. Takes a little nick, but Oxford is able to keep it in at his near post. Five minutes to half time. Motherwell nil, Dundee United nil. That's a real chance for United. Van der Sander is past to Stevenson's too short. He's then got to cut inside and the chance is gone. Yeah, just final ball for either side has just really not been on the money and United have probably got themselves into better positions on the whole, but because the final ball has let them down, the chances ultimately aren't being created. As Adi Boyega plays it forward and it's returned by Casey. Picked up here by Doherty midway inside his own half, been chased down, plays it forward, looking for Trapanovsky. McGinn's quickly in on him though, and Miller has it and he turns it back to O'Donnell, just inside the United half. Now Strafkowski finds uh, McGinn here, right hand side, Miller in support. It is Miller now, 10 yards from the goalie. Low ball in, now oh, it's well dealt with, but Declan Gallagher sliding in at the near post to knock it away. That's a really important intervention from the former Motherwell defender. And then it's a poor challenge by. Ferry there, and uh, it'll be a free kick to Motherwell, the foul on McGinn, who'd stayed forward, and it's a, a free kick to Motherwell, just about maybe eight or nine yards away from the, the angle of the box on the right-hand side, a few yards in from the right touchline, and Lennon Miller with an opportunity here, with three and a half minutes left in the half to swing one in, and uh, try and hit some of the Motherwell players inside that Dundee United penalty area now. John Beaton just uh, urging Trapanowski, I think it is the one-man wall, to move back a little bit. So Lennon Miller, right-hand side, looking to curl this into the box. A good ball in, and it's a motherwell head that gets it at the, the near post. Is it Casey, who's, Casey, yeah. Casey who met it at the near post, but he couldn't angle it on target. A poor effort, actually, in the end from the big defender, who probably should have done better, Stephen Cregan. Could he have volleyed it? It's almost like he was kneeling down to try and head the ball. I'm not too sure if Liam Gordon was in, a way, uh, in his way and he caught it at the last minute, but that's been Motherwell's most productive ploy most of the season, Alistair, has set plays. They've scored a lot from, from wide free kicks, from corner kicks, from open play. They don't create an awful lot. Yeah, Casey's been on the score sheet himself a couple of times against uh, St Johnston and in the League Cup against Edinburgh City. As, uh, Balls out for a throw in this near side to Dundee United. The Motherwell fans again down below us feel that Zach Robinson has been fouled, but nothing given by the officials. As we are uh, looking at uh, a goalless first half, unless there's a bit of drama to come in the next couple of minutes. But uh, it's looking unlikely just at this stage as McGinn has it midway inside his own half. He's closed down by Van der Sander, but finds O'Donnell. O'Donnell right hand side into the feet of. Robinson, he can't keep a hold of it though, and Sybil picks up for United and gets it back from Ferry. Ferry once more back to his captain Doherty inside the last couple of minutes of uh, the regulation 45, and I don't think there'll be too much in the way of added on time. There haven't been any real stoppages at all of note as Halliday picks up just inside his own half, plays it square to Strafkowski, who goes back to Casey again. I imagine Stephen. Taking is thinking why they're not going forward. But they are going further back the way to Liam Gordon this time. Gordon closed down by Van der Sander. He plays it forward into the feet 
of Halliday. Halliday with a short pass to Wilson. Stuart Kettlewell himself doesn't look particularly happy with the fact that they're not uh, picking a few more forward passes. Here's McGinn closed down there by, Zarkos, uh, by Trapanovsky. Stuart Kettlewell trying to get instructions on to his side, I think, to get the ball forward a bit quicker than they are doing. Here's uh, Miller on the halfway line. Plays it square to former and uh, fellow academy graduate Ewan Wilson who moves down the left hand side then swings the ball into the box O'Donnell went up to try and get there Graham beat him to it though and uh, then it's a foul by Zavkowski right on the goal line too Dundee United free kick goes just a few seconds left then in this opening period and it's uh, it's not exactly lived up to expectations Alan no it's KJ, really KJ. Just trying to think what manager would be better pleased. I think Jim Goodwin overall, because they've got you can see that they're style of play, they're trying to make Muller kick it long. And when they get the ball, they're trying to play passes. Docker is threaded one through Sybil to go as well. It's just been their final delivery into the box. It's been poor from Dundee United. Free kick taken by Walton over the halfway line, one by Gordon, chested down by Doherty, who sees Stevenson making a run out on the right-hand side and he picks him out with a great ball. Stevenson tries to control it on the head, but good play from Wilson. One minute of added on time, which we're into <laughs> now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Stephen O'Donnell just sees the ball. Out of play for a Motherwell throw-in midway inside his own half. This is the first time I've seen uh, you and Wilson, Stephen, uh, but I'm guessing that you'll have seen a decent amount of them. I'll just come back to that because here's Robinson into Miller, trying to get back to Robinson with the back heel, maybe a little bit over elaborate there from Miller, but uh, Miller will pick up once more with Taz Wanisi just outside the penalty area, trying to find room perhaps for the shot, I'm not sure what he was trying there, whether it was a disguised pass, it's cleared by Adi Boyega, picked up by Wilson, Taz Wanisi once more left-hand side of the box, trying to shake off Adi Boyega, Wilson still available, takes a touch, now the young... Uh, Wing back, then leaves it to Mazronisi again, curls it in, not a great delivery, away by Doherty. McGinn plays it in towards the edge of the box again, it might just break for Miller, good save from Walton. Now it's Robinson, it goes, oh, goal! What a strike from Zach Robinson on the stroke of half-time! An absolute exercise missile beyond Jack Walton from the right boot of Zach Robinson for his first goal of the season. And what a way to break the deadlock after Miller had been denied just seconds earlier. Robinson rifles it home. It's Motherwell 1, Dundee United 0. Well, you talk about a quality finish. Completely out of sync of how the game has been. That is absolutely it. He said the game needed to spring into life. Someone needed to take a little bit of responsibility. And it's Zach Robinson that's done it. The Dundee United players are complaining about something. I don't know if they know or not, there's no VAR, so the referee doesn't get another look. It's not here tonight. But anyway, Zach Robinson, he's waited for his first real opportunity as a Motherwell player. He's had to be patient tonight. He's had to fight and scrap with very poor service at times, but he just put his head down. He put his laces through the back of the ball, and Jack Walton couldn't stop it. It absolutely flew in, and Fort Park has erupted. What a hit. What a hit that is. Half-time whistle goes, incredible stuff. It's a really good save by Walton from Lennon Miller. But this place is just taken off now, Stephen. What a finish that is from Robinson. Yeah, that's got the crowd on their feet just in the stroke of half-time. Zach Robinson's first mother will goal. It's his first goal of any sort since he came on to score the third for Dundee against Livingston at the end of January. Uh, and that is some way to break your duck. Absolutely brilliant finish from Zach Robinson, slightly on the angle from about 15 yards out, and absolutely no chance for the keeper. It was past him before he knew it had been hit, and it really has brightened up a first half that was uh, kind of nondescript. Before that, there was a Trapanowski shot near post that was saved after 16 minutes. Robinson himself had a, an effort from outside the area that was comfortably saved by Walton and uh, Casey sent a header off target but really nothing to write home about until the second minute of stoppage time in that first period uh, when Lennon Miller on the spin had a decent shot well saved by Walton eventually broke to Zach Robinson a 
about 15 yards from goal and he absolutely leathered it beyond the United keeper to make the half-time scoreline in this League Cup quarter-final. Motherwell 1, Dundee United 0. The Scottish League Cup. This is the chance they've been waiting for. Cross goal comes back to it. Live on Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. Previously on The Good, The Bad and The Unexpected with Mark Nelson. Greg Kane from Hue and Cry. I was the musical director for a TV show in 1993. One of the guests, I thought it was a guy called Jamie Rokai, but it wasn't, it was Jamie Rokai. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of twists and turns as well-known names share their good and bad tales. Event Fielding. During my Blue Peter years, I was told, right, join the British bobsleigh team. I thought it was just like sledging. <laughs> <laughs> Listen on BBC Sounds. You've had a very strange life. <laughs> you can say that again, Brilliant. Greg. You can You've say had a very strange life, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> the good, the bad and the unexpected. Fridays from 1.30 on BBC Radio Scotland. It was a match bubbling with anticipation of something possibly happening in the first half, which never quite came to fruition until injury time. And what a dramatic conclusion to this first half between Motherwell and Dundee United in this League Cup quarter-final at Fir Park, Motherwell go in at the break, 1-0 up thanks to that wonderful goal from Zach Robinson. Ten matches without a goal so far this season. Finally, he gets one, and what a goal it was. What a potentially important goal for Motherwell. Lennon Miller's shot brilliantly saved by Jack Walton in the Dundee United goal, but the ball falling to Zach Robinson on the edge of the six-yard box. He lashed the ball into the top corner. And these Motherwell fans all around us here at Fir Park absolutely delighted as they tuck into their half-time pies. It hasn't been a classic so far, but that has certainly given this game a spark this evening here at Fir Park. Alan Preston and Stephen Cragen are with us. You've been listening to them on co-commentary duties with Alistair Lamont for the first 45 and Stephen Cragen, what a spark of inspiration from Zach Robinson and from Lennon Miller. Just a wonderful moment for the home crowd to enjoy. Well, first of all, I think Dundee United can feel a little bit aggrieved <clears throat> being behind in the game. I think they've been the better team. They've looked the most likely if a goal's going to come. He felt it was going to come for them. It felt like the game was drifting towards half-time. I think Stuart Kettlewell would have been happier at 0-0 going in at some stages because his team hadn't played that well. There's no synergy amongst the team. They're passing forward, it's been poor, it's been aimless balls forward, whereas Dundee United has been quite structured and cultured, but in, in, in quarter-finals and in important cup games performance is really irrelevant if you go on and win the game, you need someone to step up when things are tight, we said tonight it could take a piece of magic, a piece of brilliance whether it be a goalkeeper with a save or a central defender with a clearance, or something like Zach Robinson has just produced and he's had better chances throughout the season he's just lacked a little bit of finesse in front of goal he's, he's tried to be a bit too cute at times with his finishing whereas tonight he just thought Do you know what I'm going to smash this as hard as I can and he got the trajectory right and it flew into the back of the net and Dundee United were surrounding the referee I don't know if there was a foul somewhere or they thought something happened but Motherwell didn't care they haven't played particularly well they'll have to play better in the second half because Dundee United will come back Babunski and Trapanovski there's a synergy between those two when they get the ball. They're looking for each other. They're looking to break Motherwell. They're looking to play in between them. They're looking to hurt them in behind. But in a game that was drifting towards half-time, it took something really special to get the goal. And fortunately for Motherwell, it went their way. Alan Preston, in that Dundee United dressing room at half-time, just how keen will that disappointment be felt? Because the stats don't quite maybe back it up, but certainly watching it with their own eyes, Dundee United probably had the better of things in terms of overall play, is that how you see it? Yeah, better without really creating much. Trapanovsky with an F up. And then Van der Sander showed Stevenson a bit short when he had a chance to roll him through. But I think the first 45 minutes before that goal, Jonathan, was instantly forgettable from both sides. Wasn't great. United had more of a structure because they wanted Mullerwell to kick it long, they pressed the game. Mullerwell never created anything until that piece of brilliance from Robinson. Muller, good tack, good save by Walton, but what a finish that is from Robinson. But I think overall, possession-wise, but possession doesn't win your games. You've got to create chances. United have got 45 minutes to stay in the cup to get to the semi-final. They're going to have to play better. They're going to have to commit more men forward if they can. And Mullerwell, I hope Mullerwell will come out and try and get a second. I don't want Mullerwell to sit back and just defend. 
So it's going to be an interesting second half, it really is. I still think United have got something in this game for them, though. I really do. Because, as we said in that opening period, there wasn't much between them, but United was slightly better. In terms of the statistics, apart from the scoreline, of course, and that's the most important one, Motherwell 1-0 up at half-time. 54% possession for Motherwell. They've had three shots on target, five shots in total. Dundee United have had two shots in total, just the one on target. And Stephen Cragen, I think I'm becoming ever more fascinated by Jort van der Sande. Now, Zach Robinson had gone 10 matches without a goal so far this season. Uh, van der Sande, it's now six and a half games, no goals. There were a couple of opportunities when Trapanovsky and maybe others had the chance to put the ball into the sort of danger area in the penalty box. He's not always in that area, though. Like, he kind of plays a different style, almost kind of building the play. Is that how you see it? Yeah, I agree. I and mean, when you think about someone of Louis Malt, ilk, he's a penalty box striker. Yes, he can win headers, he can link up play. But you know as a wide man, if you put the ball in the right area, Louis Malt's first thought is goal. And it's interesting, Tony Watt was sitting, or he certainly was sitting down in front of us. Tony Watt's a reactive striker as well. If the ball comes to him in the box, he'll have a shot. But he, he, for me, he's never really proactive in making those runs like Louis Mould. I'm not saying it's a, a criticism, but it's just the style of play that they have. And Van der Sande is a hold-up player. He wants to link it. But as a number nine, you've got to be someone who gets goals. When you're in a team and you've got two good players like Babunski and Trapanovski and you've got Sybil and you've got Doherty feeding you chances and trying to create, you've got to be a threat. You've got to keep defenders on their toes. Whereas I think defenders can always see him. They always know where he's going to be. He's not trying to play on the blind side. He's not going short and then spinning long or starting long and coming short. He's easier to play against than what an elusive Louis Malt would be. So John, uh, sorry, Jim Goodwin may have to think about that the longer the game goes. Zach Robinson probably is a little bit the same, but he's a fighter and a scrapper. And you know, the service he's had, I think, tonight has been abysmal at times. And he gets criticism of the Motherwell fans, but what can he do with the balls up to his throat or he's trying to challenge Declan Gallagher in the air? When the ball comes up to him and he gives it away, yes, I get that, but... That, you know, it has to be better, but back to, to Van de Sande, he needs a little bit more. He, he, he needs to play more like a penalty box striker. Yeah, he's come from Dutch football, obviously. Jonathan, it doesn't look like a natural finish up to me. No. There was and a time when Trapanovsky got the ball, and he hit a brilliant cross on outside his right foot, and you're expecting Van de Sande, who's a, the main striker, get across the front post. So Kyogo would have been over there. Kyogo would have been over. And our, and our day, it would have been John Robertson for me at Hearts. Rally McCoy would have been across that front post, tapping it into the back of the net. It doesn't look a natural finisher, and that's maybe going to be where the problem is. And I give it 10, 15 minutes, but it's still the same. Louis Moult has to come on for you now. It's an interesting one, Alan, isn't it? Because Jim Goodwin deserves huge credit for identifying and signing Bojan Majowski at Aberdeen, and what a goal scorer he was. Maybe it's the case that Jim's just looking at York van der Sande as a different kind of striker and he wants the goals to come from Trapanovsky or Babunski. Yeah. He's more of a target man more than anything. He's one that's going to hold it up, flick it on if he can. But if you're, if you're doing that, you need your two wingers to be up the inside of you as well. No point in him flicking it on to no one because he's not going to catch it himself. Position yourself more in the box, make the front post run when it's need be because you're hoping that your winger from the opposite side will be coming in behind you. But it just doesn't it just doesn't look comfortable for me as an out and out striker on his own. He may need a partner, and that partner might be Louis Moult. The thing is, Jonathan, if he's not a natural goal scorer, and as Jim has him in the team, for example, to hold up play and link up play, there has to be a goal scorer somewhere else in the team. Because you can't expect so-called non-goal scoring centre forward to score your goals when you know that's not a strength so then you have to have someone else whether it's someone in behind him or one of your wide players has to chip in the six seven eight nine ten goals a season because if the centre forward is not bringing that then there's a lack of goal threat whereas Louis Malt potentially is a two I think Zach Robinson is better than a two a bye is better than a two but both managers seem to be stuck in this three four two one system which means you only play with one striker what do you think Stuart Kettlewell will be saying to his players at halftime, Stephen? I mean, they've got this goal advantage at halftime, which he probably he probably had what he was going to say to the players at halftime ready in his head. That shouldn't change. Yeah. That shouldn't All change. All right, OK. Just because there's a moment, a moment of brilliance. Sure. If you've got things you want to say to your team, things you're not happy with, things you want them to do better, particularly the two centre midfield players, I think Drakowski and Andy Holliday have contributed a little, they've made a couple of tackles. They don't play any telling passes, they don't try and break lines, they don't run forward with the ball or without the ball. I think they have to be better. So that message still is reaffirmed. You still are not happy with it. Yes, you've got the goal, but you're still not happy with certain aspects. The ball's up to Zach Robinson, have to be better. 
if it's a, an aimless ball forward and it drops in the midfield, your midfield have to pick up second balls. If you're not winning the first one, you've got to pick up scraps. All those things Stuart's probably noted down, he has to still give to his players because they need to be better at it. And that's him not playing well enough. Can you eat a little bit more? Can you get more from them? I think the central defenders are taking the ball off the goalkeeper, but they don't really have a plan. It's going to Stephen O'Donnell, it's going to Liam Gordon, it's going to Dan Casey, it's going back to Paul McGinn and it's going forward. There has to be a way of getting someone on the ball. And just lastly, Lennon Miller has said playing higher up. Yes, he had an influence on the goal, but he's, in, he's been anonymous for far too long for me because he's playing in a position I don't think suits the best qualities that he has. Goals will certainly change Jim Goodwin's team talk though because he's got to go forward. He's got to ask for more from his side. Babunski and Tapanovsky, Van der Sattler, if he can more forward passes from Sibyl and Doherty try and commit more men forward because as, as it sits they're out the cup they need to commit men they need to go forward there has to be 10-15 minutes if it doesn't make a change at half time which I don't expect them to within 10-15 minutes if it's still the same he has to start throwing bodies on Alan Preston I must admit you're probably well skilled at this but you've turned it into an art form that you've managed to devour that half time pie while still having a discussion it's couscous it's not a pie for people that can't see <laughs> it's couscous <laughs> yeah, nobody's going to believe that for a second thanks very much listen I'll give the guys a, a little moment to, to finish off those half time treats and just let you know what is happening for the rest of this weekend because it is a big league cup quarter final weekend and of course it's all covered here on Sportsline but there's plenty more on top of that, as always, kicking off with Off the Ball tomorrow on BBC Radio Scotland, 5 past 12, till 2 o'clock with Stuart Cosgrove and Tam Cowan, and they are joined by the legend that is Doogie Donnelly, so that'll be worth listening into on BBC Radio Scotland from midday. Sports Sound then takes to the airways with Kenny McIntyre at 2 o'clock, and as we've already discussed this evening, two Premiership matches tomorrow. A huge one in Paisley is Heart of Midlothian, bottom of the table, take on St Mirren. Uh, and St Johnston up against Ross County tomorrow, the other Premiership match. At half past five, two more of the League Cup quarter finals. Oh, half past five kickoffs, curiously, for television reasons, of course. Aberdeen at home against League Two, the Spartans and Rangers. Back at Ibrox, they entertain Tony Doherty's Dundee. And on Sunday, Celtic, they take on Falkirk at three o'clock. That's the only match, of course, that day. All of it covered on Sports Sound. What else would you expect? Very quick word before the second half gets going from Stephen Craig and Alan Preston. Stephen, what are you expecting in the second half? I'm expecting Motherwell to be better than what they were in the first half. Dundee United will have to force the issue. They will have to go chasing the game. They don't have to score in the open five minutes. They've just got to make sure they give themselves a chance to create better opportunities. Alan Preston still backing United to win this. I am, yeah. Commit men forward more and more if they can. Up the pace, up the tempo, win the ball back. Try and get the next goal because I think if Muller will get it, it could be done. We shall find out right now. Let's cross your match commentator this evening. Alistair Lamont. Thanks again, Johners. Uh, no changes from either side just yet. So... As you were, as United prepared to get us back underway, they'll go from left to right in this second period as we look at it from the back of the main stand. And uh, looking to get back on terms and force extra time at worst. And uh, ideally for them, just turned it right round. But uh, Sibold kicks us off. And we're back underway. And uh, I do imagine that uh, both sides will be looking to improve on their first half performances but uh, Motherwell having just got that goal that could be absolutely massive of course in the final shake up but uh, United have it, Doherty for Graham and now forward to Babunski who again uh, has failed to find a teammate with the attempted pass and O'Donnell just nods it down to Ashton Oxborough who had that one uh, near post save to make from uh, Trapanowski relatively early on in the game and beyond that uh, really hasn't been overly troubled United will look to try and change that as, uh, as O'Donnell who went up and has landed awkwardly uh, and I think he is going to need some treatment uh, here and the Motherwell physio going to come on early in this second period to check on O'Donnell's welfare just seemed to come down heavily. I'm not sure if he's shoulder. Yeah, shoulder or arm that he's landed on. But 
hopefully nothing too nasty. But otherwise, Stuart Kettlewell could be forced into making a change that he wasn't necessarily planning at this juncture. And he's just uh, telling a couple of the subs who are already out, warming up to just kind of step up slightly, just in case. Well, we have the direct replacement in Marvin Coletta. He came on at the weekend against Aberdeen. He came on with 20 minutes to go. So they have the natural replacement. They could bring on Kofi Barmer as a right centre half and play Paul McGinn yeah. as a wing back. So Stuart's got options there, certainly. But let's hope Stephen O'Donnell can get back up because I think he's been impressive tonight again. He's been really consistent in everything he's done so far. I, I began to ask you just uh, ahead of the, the goal going in about you and Wilson. We obviously never got back to, to talking about. I mean, is he a player that you've seen a lot of? And is he another player that the Motherwell fans can be really excited about his future yeah, de development I, I mean you think at the end of last season he was playing for Beath Juniors on loan so to go from yep. that Alistair to playing regularly in the Scottish Premiership he's got a lovely left foot, he's got good athleticism I would like him sometimes or more often when he receives the ball to receive it facing forward too often for me, yes, he's a young man, he's a little bit wary sometimes but his first touch is always back towards his own goal which then gives uh, the wide player against him a chance to go and put him under pressure He's got a lovely left foot, good cross through the ball. 1v1 defending is another little weakness. I remember watching him here against Daniel Mackay when they played in the last group game of the uh, League Cup and he gave him a tough time. Shaden Morris got past him and, and set up a goal for uh, Aberdeen at the weekend. So yeah. there's little parts of his game he has to improve on, but certainly he's got the raw attributes. You've got to give Stuart Kettlewell credit for keeping him in the team. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Stephen O'Donnell's back on his feet and... Uh, looks to be moving okay I suspect he'll be able to resume fairly shortly just uh, going off the field of play for the moment but he'll be rejoining proceedings eminently here he comes as uh, play resumes then and United have it through Ari Boyega they trail by a goal to nil the goal coming in uh, first half stoppage time and that's slack there between it's Babunski again wasn't it he's trying to uh, play it back to Ari Boyega, they were on different wavelengths and it's out for a throw into Motherwell but Babunski really hasn't hit the heights thus he's far been, he's been really poor, I was really looking forward to seeing him live tonight but he's been dreadful terrific pedigree coming through the Barcelona academy doesn't get much better than that in terms of a football education and uh, he's played at a decent level before coming to United but uh, so far tonight it's not been his night but uh, time yet, four minutes gone in this first period, uh, sorry, second period and it is uh, still 1-0 Motherwell as it was at half time and O'Donnell uh, who has uh, seemingly completely recovered, will take this throw and over on the far side, midway inside the United half, Motherwell right down the right it goes, it's knocked out of play again by Ferry, so it's uh, going to be another throw in, this one about 10 yards away from the corner flag, oh, O'Donnell's going down again actually I think he's done. He's done, yeah. Must yeah. be, must be. I don't be. know what it is. Yeah. Yes, Marvin Coletta looks like he'll come on and replace him. It's odd because, he, I mean, he, he seemed to, the way he was running, and he looked to be running freely, but all of a sudden he just goes back down. So, um, clearly he's not a player that would ever uh, come off lightly. So, yeah, it's going to be an early second-half change as Marvin Coletta will come on to replace Stephen O'Donnell at uh, right wing-back or right midfield however you you want to look at it applause from the home fans for O'Donnell who you know, Stephen was saying earlier on might split opinion but I think uh, he can never be faulted for endeavour and uh, most football fans will always recognise that kind of commitment and uh, he makes way early in the second period though for Coletta who immediately will go across there and uh, take this throw in this is going to be his first act here O'Donnell seems to be just holding his shoulder there as he as he walks around but anyway uh, the throw in comes to nothing as uh, Trapanovsky tries to break free in the counter attack but Motherwell are covered and they get it back to Oxborough long there from the mother will keep her out to the right hand side Kaleta just managing to keep that one in but it falls to Sybil just inside his own half and it's Graham left hand side is Ferry back now with uh, Ross Graham midway inside his own half plays it square to Declan Gallagher 
And now Ross Stalkerty had a pretty good first half. He's been as, as good as anyone in the park. In the first period as uh, O'Donnell continues to make his way around the pitch and is applauded by the home fans. But here's Sybil coming forward dangerously for United out to the left-hand side now. Ferry comes in off the left, gets it back and looking for Sybil, but it's just behind him and Motherwell break that up. And can they move forward in the counter now? Down goes Andy Halliday. Was there a free kick in there? A foul? Yeah, there's a yellow card for Ari Boyega for the challenge on Andy Halliday. And it will be a free kick to Motherwell inside the centre circle. And it remains Motherwell 1, Dundee United 0. There was a chance for Motherwell to break quickly there. The referee of correct call. He should have shifted it quicker though. Far too slow. Yeah. And the ball comes to me. Andy Halliday wants to take two, three, four touches. Suddenly attacks over. Yes, he's won a free kick, but there was a real opportunity for a counter attack. Free kicks taken out to the left hand side for Wilson, who tries to play it down the line, but he's skewed that one. And it's out of play for a throw in two United. Uh, deep in their own territory. Adi Boyega uh, getting the first yellow card of the game, uh, by my reckoning. He was uh, taken off at Tanadice last week, uh, having picked up a, a, a yellow which was uh, verging on. Orange, if you like, it was, a, it was a challenge he made that um, had us questioning in commentary whether it might be upgraded to a red, but uh, ultimately a yellow sufficed. And he's on a booking again tonight as he knocks that one away. And Doherty then pokes it on, but picked up by Casey. Casey now driving Motherwell forward, steps inside Sybil and he's taken down. And Motherwell have a free kick midway inside the United half, just left the centre. It's a decent position this one. And, uh, they're both threatening and looking for a second goal here. He's been impressive, Dan Casey. I have to say, I really like how he plays the game, his athleticism. He's playing a little bit out of position. I think he's better as a right centre half, but always really competitive, always fully committed and good for a goal when the opportunity presents itself. It might present itself here if uh, Lennon Miller or uh, Will Ferry can deliver a decent ball in from the left hand side. Both players standing over it. Miller leaves it, it will be, in fact it's Halliday uh, rather than Ferry, uh, of course Ferry plays for Dundee United, so quite clearly it was Andy Halliday who was swinging that one in, it doesn't uh, manage to find a teammate though, and there's another foul in an almost identical position by Doherty on Miller, there'll be another chance here for Motherwell to try and put a decent ball into the box. It wouldn't uh, be letting Halliday take it? It wouldn't be letting Ferry take it certainly, but uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no holiday either after that last one. Yeah, Lennon Miller just picking himself back up. If he's, I think he's going to take a holiday. Yeah, well, Miller having just been fouled. Halliday makes a signal, and again, Miller does leave it, and again, Halliday swings it in this time to the back post. Caleta rises, where it's Adi Boyega who thumps it clear. Trapanovsky manages to get it into the path of Babunski, tries to direct it back to his compatriot, but... Uh, Strafkowski was in there, but he's run the ball out of play. We've played almost 10 minutes of this second half, and it's um, it's kind of started the same way as the first half, i.e. pretty uneventful. So it's Mullerwell at the moment, they've got the goal advantage. You need, you need to do more. I see the subs are warming up. Can't be too long. Something's got to change in this game for Dundee United, and quickly. Harry Boyega gets it forward for Stevenson down the right, but he's forced back the way by Wilson. Eventually forces it down the line, Casey hooks it over his shoulder, Mazonisi has knocked that off Ari Boyega, it'll be a Motherwell throw in, about uh, 15 yards inside, United half left hand side, and the throw in will be left by Wilson for Casey to take, Casey looking for options on this left hand side. Motherwell will feel that a second goal would be uh, taking them a long way towards that semi-final place as uh, the goal scorer Robinson picks up and leaves it to Wilson, left-hand side. Now Casey swings that one in. Up goes Miller, he can't get there. Mazwanisi nods it down, but only to Sybold. Sybold gives it straight to Casey, though, and Casey uh, maybe slightly fortuitously gets it to Zarkowski. Now Miller out to the right-hand side to Mazwanisi on the angle of the box, on the 
on the right, Mazzonisi trying to find room for the cross up against Ferry, goes back to Halliday, Halliday square for Casey, Casey joining in the attack and now Wilson, Wilson teases it, it's a good ball, and Zach Robinson, and maybe saw it late, it would be a slight defence of him, but he should probably do better with the header that came in, it was a good ball from Wilson, Robinson off header with the target, 11 minutes played in this second period, Motherwell won, Dun United who are about to make a couple of changes, nil. It's almost as if Zach Robinson didn't expect it, but if you're a centre forward and you're on the penalty spot or closer to the six yard box, you've got to anticipate, you've got to be hoping the ball's coming into your area so you can be proactive, it's exactly what we spoke about at half time, waiting until the ball's there and then trying to make something happen, always expect the ball to come into your area as a centre forward. A couple of changes coming, and Louis Moult uh, is one of them. That's, that's Sam Dalby as well, yeah, it is. So it's two forward players coming on for Dundee United very shortly. And there's a minute's uh, applause taking place at the moment for a, a mother old fan who, who passed away just recently. Uh, my apologies, don't have his name but uh, here's Ross Doherty from distance, not too far away just wide of the right hand post as Oxborough dived away to his right Doherty just off target but uh, that was as close as United have come to a leveller that was a decent hit, good play, cutting inside Doherty good right foot shot, keeper diving full length just wide of the target well, these changes are going to be made now, and uh, Van der Sander, you'd have thought. Yeah, Trapanovsky is the first player to come off, and Van der Sander is going to be the other one, so that looks like it'll be more like a, just a, a straight two up front. Molten uh, Dalby coming on for uh, Trapanovsky and Van der Sander. We'll see what. Uh, effect that has but uh, certainly Jim Goodwin uh, not content with what he's seen from his side in the opening 13 minutes of the second period oh, Van der Sander has been a big big disappointment he really has there hasn't been much of a reaction from the United side as a whole to the loss of that opening goal at the start of the second period so uh, I understand Jim Goodwin wanted to shake things up a bit they've got a a throw in here on the right hand side about 25 yards from the corner fly it's back from Stevenson to Ari Boyega and then to Gallagher and forward it goes Babunski who might consider himself fairly fortunate not yeah. to have been hooked as well can't uh, make anything of it but Robinson's done well there to get the ball to Miller Miller just inside the United half he's almost crowded out there but he's done well to keep possession and then Halliday digs out the pass for Dravkowski and now it's Coletta, right hand side dangerous looking ball in and just wide from Lennon Miller he made it well at the edge of the six yard box he's claiming it should be a corner actually That's what I think, I think it's a corner yeah, well uh, yeah, John Beaton said his mind change you don't often see that but I think the assistants maybe helped him out there on the far side and it is going to be a corner as Miller threatened lovely ball in from Coletta you'd have to say well there's that first opportunity that when Dundee United open up and they commit men forward and Mother will turn the ball over and suddenly Dundee United are back and tracking towards their own goal it's a great ball in by Coletta and then Miller just couldn't get across like possibly Ross Graham but good defending corner kick then from the right hand side Halliday across there to swing it in left footed, it's a deep ball up goes Casey, comes out to Miller, save, oh, oh terrific wow. save, how did that stay out pretty sure it was Walton to go down to keep it out initially from the effort from the edge of the box from Miller as Muller will knock it on the door for a second goal I'm not sure if it's Aguidoriega close it off the line there, I really do, I thought it was him that was a chance, that, that could have been a long long way back for Dundee United, he's been a good bit of spelly pressure from Motherwell and Lena Miller denied again as Halliday will get another opportunity from this uh, subsequent corner again from the right hand side swings it in towards the back post again again it's Casey who wins it it's headed away only as far as Masuanisi big claim for a handball in there John Beaton gives nothing and United come away and it's Doherty looking to try and release Mo up goes Wilson though to win the header Stevenson will latch on to it and back goes Lennon Miller to cut out his pass and Oxborough comes to the edge of his box and clears uh, difficult for us to tell if there was a handball in there at all maybe get a, a word in the ear from uh, the producer who's um, 
watching pictures come back into the BBC building, but uh, certainly big claims as the shot from Masvanisi was charged down. I think it's straight at him, I really do. I don't think he's anywhere for him to go. Well, it certainly feels like the last three or four minutes we've got a game on. United have made the changes, they put two centre-forwards on, they're going to commit more men forward, there might be more space for Motherwell to play in. So it's a game of cat and mouse. It certainly just feels like it's coming to life that bit more than the last few minutes. As uh, United now look to try and build an attack and create an equaliser. Dalby coming off the front to knock it back to Graham, out to the left-hand side for Ferry. Gallagher now at the back, just inside his own half, out to Doherty. Doherty certainly been uh, as lively as anyone for United. He's closed down there well by Zach Robinson. Former Dundee man will have relished that goal against uh, his old rivals. Didn't really happen for him in the Premiership for Dundee, having uh, served them well in their Championship winning season, certainly. But uh, now that mother will have been signed from AFC Wimbledon in the summer. Yeah, I don't think he would have ever played in the Dundee Derby. Uh, I think they crossed each other, exactly. didn't they? Promotion relegation. Doherty into the penalty area. That's a poor ball from him, though. Oxborough takes that one under no pressure whatsoever. We've played uh, 17 and a half minutes of this second period. And Motherwell still leading by a goal to nil. And uh, apart from the Doherty shot that went fizzing wide a few minutes ago, uh, Dundee United still haven't really troubled the Motherwell goal. No, they've not done enough in this opening 17 minutes of the second half. You'd think they would come out, you know, cup tie, you've got to take chances, go forward, make sure you win your own personal battles. That's not the case. Motherwell are on top at the moment. Uh, Miller hooks it forward, and uh, Adi Boyega hasn't dealt with that then uh, manages to recover pretty well against Masmanisi, but then Wilson comes in to help out his teammate. Who did that come off last is the question. And uh, it will be a Dundee United throw-in deep in their own half, which is taken by Ari Boyega into Doherty, who immediately switches the play out to the left-hand side for Ferry. Ferry just nods it down and gets moving over the halfway line. Across goes Coletta to try and close him down. That's a poor ball from Ferry straight into the arms again of Oxborough and Jim Goodwin must be contemplating further changes as his side look to try and get back into this cup tie. The final pass from Dundee United has been really poor. He had acres of space to run into there. He likes to play it in the box simple, right into the goalie's arms. I think it's a bit desperate, isn't yeah. it? You know, just take your time. You've still got 30 minutes left, so take your time, build your play, wait until you're in a better position before you put the cross in. Forward it goes, but dealt with by Liam Gordon. Graham gets it to Gallagher just outside their own penalty area. And Graham now out to Ferry. Ferry about 10 yards inside his own half on the left-hand side for United. Feeds it forward for the on-loan Wrexham striker Dalby. Dalby trying to turn away there from Gordon, but uh, he's out-muscled. And then Zdravkowski plays it off Dalby. It'll be a Motherwell throw-in. Uh, I certainly feel like uh, Motherwell have taken the confidence that, that naturally a, a goal brings them. They have, but I think Dundee United have changed their style of play. I think they've been a little bit more direct now. And just because you have two centre-forwards on, sometimes players think, well, we've got two of them this time, so let's throw it forward. But Dan Casey wants to hit it. Liam Gordon wants to hit it. Paul McGinn doesn't mind mixing it up. So United have to go back to playing through, trying to get Babunski on the ball, who's playing in behind. I would, I would take Babunski off. I'm surprised he's dead on. I thought he'd have took him, took him off and kept Trantanovski. Sybil's lost out, Robinson now for Masronisi, up against Ari Boyega, can he get the shot away in the left foot? Good challenge from Ari Boyega to force it behind for a corner kick, Ari Boyega never quite had the courage of his convictions there, and Ari Boyega makes a good challenge, but it will be a Motherwell corner, 20 minutes played in this second half, still Motherwell 1, Dundee United 0. Motherwell have been by far and away the better side in the second half, and that was a chance there, at least he does the right thing, he commits the, the, the centre half and goes by him, tries to go by him, Good defending in the end, away for a corner. Miller from the left-hand side then, the right footer, uh, preparing to swing this one in. Masvanisi comes and offers himself short, but Miller plays it to the back post. Gordon gets something on it, but could only take it straight behind. It'll be a Dundee United goal kick. Jim Goodwin standing with arms folded at the edge of his technical area. No immediate sign that there's going to be another change, but uh, let's get other options. Glenn Middleton hasn't seen a great deal of action uh, since uh, promotion he's uh, available on the bench you've got uh, Miller Thompson as well who although he played at fullback a lot last season uh, certainly more naturally a winger he's here's Dalby 
at the other end anyway. Right hand side of the box can't get the better of Casey though. Dravkowski gets it back to Casey who sweeps it forward only as far as Doherty though. Doherty out to Ferry on the left hand side. Flicked on there by Mo, but he couldn't link with a teammate and it's not long. And Walton has to come out of his goal and under pressure from Robinson just slices it into the main stand. And it'll be a mother will throw in. <laughs> the ball's thrown back in from the crowd and hits Stuart Kettlewell in the back, which I'm sure he didn't appreciate. Do you know what? Credit to Zach Robinson because he was never favourite to get that ball. He was never going to get in the end of it. He could have let Jack Walton take the ball, take it into his box, but he doesn't. He chases him down, forces him to kick the ball out of the pitch, and suddenly now Motherwell have got a throw in in Dundee United's half. Which will be taken by Dan Casey. Just about 10 yards inside the United half. Left hand side, Casey down the line he goes. Doherty gets his head to it. Thumped forward by Babunski. Dalby will give chase. Gordon trying to hold him up. Dalby's done well though, and he gets it to Moat. Moat trying to step away from him again. Now he goes to ground. <laughs> and the yellow card's been issued. I think it's Paul McGinn. Yeah, I was going to say, I was just double checking because I, I mean, it looked like a foul to me, but I was just because yeah. it, it almost was in the direction of Louis Moult, but I didn't think it was a, a bit of simulation and, and the free kick has been given to Dundee United. And actually, if you look at that, that's probably not a bad yellow card what? for Paul McGinn to take because Moult had taken a really good first touch and McGinn just steps across him, doesn't he? Well, probably, that's the experience. Aye. Drag it back. Mother had a throw in. They throw it down the line. They lose the first ball, they lose the second one. One thumb up the pitch, Liam Gordon doesn't deal with and suddenly they put themselves under pressure. But it's a really good opportunity now for United. Yeah, it is. So the free kick has been awarded, what will we say, about 28 yards, thereabouts, out from the, the goal, just slightly right of centre. Ferry with the left foot. Is, set up for Ferry. Yeah, it is. he is uh, looking favourite at the moment, but it, no, it's Babunski who sends it to the back post instead. That surely was begging for a, a left foot just to have a shot at goal, but it comes to nothing initially, and Sybil picks up, though, on the left-hand side, sends it back in into the arms of Oxborough, and it's uh, uninspiring stuff, you'd have to say right now, from Dundee United, and some of their big summer signings haven't really hit the mark tonight at all. No, I, I, don't, I, I think Ferry's raging there, I think he was going to take it, and Babunski steps onto it, again, he's given the ball away. Yeah, it wasn't even like it was a, a particularly good delivery towards the back post, and uh, the chance is gone. So, uh, just under a quarter of the game to go, still United well in the game in terms of the scoreline, just 1-0 the trail, and uh, of course uh, an equaliser would take it into extra time, but... Uh, Motherwell looking here for a, a second as Robinson comes forward. Oh, it's lovely skill to get away from Sybil. Then he slips it, looking for Wilson, but Stevenson had read it. But the initial skill from Zach Robinson there to leave Craig Sybil absolutely foundering on his backside uh, was a joy to behold, certainly for the Motherwell fans round about us. It's, uh, <laughs> sorry, on you go, Greg. It's amazing what a goal can do. You know, suddenly the fans are cheering everything he does and they're loving his energy and his appetite for the game, whereas prior to that, they were a little bit frustrated with him. Wilson then, about 10 yards from the corner flag here with the throw-in, left-hand side, hurls it in towards the near post, uh, flicked on, comes out to Halliday, his shot is blocked and then knocked away by Babunski, that's going to trickle out play on the halfway line for a Motherwell throw-in. Just about 20 minutes left to play then, Motherwell leading by a goal to nil, the goal came in the first half stoppage time, Zach Robinson's first goal for the club, first goal since January. And uh, that is the difference between the sides right now. They've got to make a change again, United. Jim has to make another change. They're going out with a whimper. Yeah, they are, rather, as uh, Robinson gives chase, but Declan Gallagher just see that out of play. Robinson almost getting his foot wrapped around him to keep it in, but it is going to be a goal kick to Dundee United. Yeah. Do they need three central defenders still? No, they don't. You know, at some stage, because yeah. I thought they went to a back four on Saturday against a Sunday against the uh, Rangers, and then a little bit more impetus going up the pitch. Walton sends it long over the halfway line. Dalby manages to get it down to Sybil. Sybil out to the left-hand side. Ferry just has to check his run, but he's picked up possession now and lays it into the path of... Moult back with Doherty, Doherty out to the right hand side now for Adi Boyega, can United carve out an equaliser here, not a bad ball into the near post but it's well defended by Casey there, Adi Boyega goes to retrieve it, does well uh, the big Irish defender, 
And now it's Stevenson, right-hand side, back to Doherty. Doherty gets it back from Sybil and then plays it on to Graham. Graham up towards the edge of the penalty, he checks back onto his right foot, goes for goal, and he is not too far away from putting that into the top tier of that stand with the United fans behind Aston Oxford's goal. A woeful effort from Ross Graham and really frustrated for Jim Goodwin and all associated with Dundee United. You've got to know what's in your locker and that's not on Ross Graham's locker, cutting in on his weaker right foot and hitting it from 30 yards. It's just not. Clay Middleton is going to enter the free just shortly. And he... Uh, he could be the type of player that could inject a bit of life into United. Hasn't been used at all in the league, actually, but he's uh, played all in the League Cup and he's about to continue that record by coming on for the closing 18 minutes plus stoppage time, potentially extra time if United can find a goal. As, uh, the ball switched out to the near side, Adi Boyega trying to take it in his stride, doesn't quite manage to do so, but Doherty picks up and finds Stevenson. Stevenson with the early cross as a header comes in, that was a big chance. Was it Louis Moult who was getting in was there? Babunski. Babunski. Babunski, was it? Oh, well, there's no massive surprise then, it ended up be, miles off target last. and he's just about, he's, he's been hooked here. That was, I mean, that was a big chance, what is he, 15 yards from goal? Yeah. And, it's uh, a tough header, it's a real tough header. He completely unmarked, it. unmarked though. Yeah, he has unmarked. He missed time just jumping, he didn't manage to get no power on it. Yeah. But I've got to say, the, the three we gave them a, a build-up at the start, Van der Sander, Babunski and Trapanovski, they've been two, the three of them. Not been a performance between any of them. You know, Jim Goodwin uh, would have certainly hoped for better, but uh, still 1-0 they trail then, with uh, 17 minutes to play at Fir Park, as uh, Casey comes under some pressure, manages to squeeze the ball square across the penalty area to Liam Gordon, and Motherwell fans around about us breathe a sigh of relief as that doesn't end up in Dundee United's possession, it's actually up the other end now for a throw into the home side, right-hand side as they attack. I think it's a 4-4-2 now for United. It looks as if Stevenson has pushed on on the right-hand side onto Ewan Wilson and Glenn Middleton will play wide on the left. Otto Bayega will play right back, so, yeah, change from Jim. Here's uh, Maswanisi brought to the ground by a somewhat frustrated and uh, disbelieving Will Ferry. It's going to be a, another free kick to Motherwell. Not a bad position at all. Midway inside the uh, United half. And uh, an opportunity here for Motherwell to swing this one in. Right hand side, Lennon Miller standing over it. United trying to hold the line about five yards outside the box, and it comes, oh, Dalby nods it down to a dangerous area. And then the shot comes in from Halliday, and he was just caught as he took it, but he was uh, too high with the effort. But he was. Uh, Caught by a trailing leg there as he swung for goal and uh, he stayed down. Looks like a sore one. It's just a follow through, I think, as much as anything else, wasn't it? That's all it was, yeah. I think it was a poor header from Dalby as well, just keeping the ball alive, putting it back in the middle of the 18 yard box, allowing Halliday to come onto it. You were trying, you were trying to indicate something by no, pointing to someone on my team sheet. It's just Coletta. He's the one. He was the one that was fouled on the far side, Masonisi. Ah, I see. Okay. Just put on the side. And it looks as if you said it was Obai was warming up, Alan. You think he yeah, may be the next yeah. to come on? He was warming up for Motherwell. You know, yeah. you know you've got to start taking chances. You so, know, that's so there's 15 like minutes left. It's been poor. They've been a second half. I expected better. First half, they were slightly the better side. Maybe find themselves unlucky to go 1 0 down. Certainly, Motherwell have been a better side in the second half. And quite a considerable margin as well, United have done nothing. Doherty shot, wide to the target, that's been about it. Halliday hobbling off, but I think he'll recover, although I did say that about Stephen O'Donnell and he had to be replaced, but uh, Halliday just limping slightly, but I think he'll be able to run that off and uh, play resumes as United have it and Halliday is back on the field of play for the moment at least. There's uh, Gallagher, Plays it square to Graham, just up to the halfway line. He comes out to the left-hand side now. Ferry plays it on to Middleton. Middleton, the substitute, trying to run his marker. He's done well, he gets to the byline. Cross comes in. Moult with the header straight into the arms of Aston Oxford. Already playing Middleton. 
doing more in the couple of minutes he's been on than uh, Babunski managed. He got three of his marker, good cross in, and Moult's header on target, but straight at the keeper. Really positive play by Glenn Middleton and they're getting to the byline. Lovely ball in. And although the He's backtracking, it's a difficult header, comfortable for the keeper, but that's better for United. Get the ball to Middleton. Here's uh, Moult. That's a lovely ball for Dalby. Dalby with the chance! Saved save. by the keeper, Ashton Oxford. I'm not sure how much he knew about that. It almost went under his body, but it took a big deflection off one of his legs and spun up over the crossbar. How that stayed out, I'm sure Sam Dalby's still wondering that. It looked like he'd struck the leveller there but it remains Motherwell 1, Dundee United 0. Well, that could be match win and a half to say it's terrific save, lovely strike, and what a pick out from Louis Malt. United, with the Middleton substitution, have got a little bit of momentum. Corner kick though it is on the left-hand side as United do search for a leveller. Very low ball into the near post, easily dealt with by Zrafkowski, Civil picks up and uh, gets it to Middleton, Middleton all the way back from inside Motherwell territory to his goalkeeper 13 to play Motherwell leading by a goal to nil but Dalby with their best chance of the game thus far perhaps hit it too straight at the keeper but the keeper still had an awful lot to do and uh, somehow managed to keep it out of the net at least the United fans can start to take part now they've been very very quiet in the second half nothing to shout about Little half chance, great save, has to be said. Very, very lucky goalkeeper, but makes himself big. A couple of changes coming here, and it is Moses Abiyi who is uh, going to come on for Maswanise. And the other change on Halliday is going to be replaced in the middle of the park by Tom Sparrow. So, a couple of changes as Motherwell. Try to see this one out, try to ensure they get back to Hamden for the first time, as I mentioned earlier, since they actually got to the final when they lost out to Celtic in 2017-18 under Stephen Robinson. Lost the Scottish Cup final that year as well. But uh, a couple of changes then from the home side as they look to hold on to their advantage. We've got a bit of defending to do here. The throw-in comes in from Graham from the right-hand side. Up goes Casey to win it. Sybil does a great block in there. Is that Sparrow who just come on the park, got out to block Sybil's attempted volley from the edge of the box, and it's going to go out for a throw-in again on the right-hand side. Another opportunity for Graham to get this one into the penalty area. In it comes, and another big long throw-in again. Casey goes up and wins the header. Very dominant at the back in the air, and now it's uh, the BA just uh, holding the ball up. Sparrow will give chase, but uh, hasn't been able to keep it in. There will be a United throw in to be taken by Adi Boyega, but 20 yards inside his own half, right-hand side. United trailing by a goal to nil with little more than 10 minutes to play, plus a bit of stoppage time. Adi Boyega down the right, flicked on by Stevenson, Doherty, Plays it in field, Sybil can't make anything of it. He's uh, left holding his face though as Robinson moves away from him. It was an accidental clash, if anything. Here's Caleta. Caleta low ball in is well defended by Graham. And uh, forward come United. Middleton though running into trouble is knocked out of play on the far side. It'll be a United throw. I think Caleta now is the latest uh, Motherwell player to be down and perhaps needing some treatment as Sybil still down as well from that previous challenge. He's now back up. But uh, Coletta, meanwhile, looks like he needs a bit of treatment. On come the Motherwell physios again. Ten minutes to play, Alan, you backed United to win this one, but you did know it was going to be tight. Yeah. Do you see them still? I mean, just in the last five, ten minutes since Middleton's come on, they've, they've offered a bit more. Yeah, the changes have certainly got United back in the game, but it's maybe too little too late. You know, it's been, it's been. I've been really disappointed in their summer signings because I expected more. I've heard so much about them, seen them on the highlights on television. I thought this is going to be it. You know, this is where United can go and win the game tonight with their front three. But they've been dreadful. The ones that have come on, Mo, Middleton, etc., they've been better, a lot better. But is it too late? That's possibly the case. But Mullerwell deserves, Mullerwell certainly deserve to be ahead. After a very even first half, Mullerwell dominated the second half, and it's only in the latter stages of the game that United have come back into it. Yeah, United making another change, Meshach Ubachima coming on for Lucas Stevenson here. 
Well, actually, that's what the announcer said, but it's Adi Boyega who's gone off. Not sure what that'll do to the United formation. They're going to play wide right. Stevenson will play in the right back area. Stamatolopoulos is uh, waiting to come on as well, having recovered from injury. And, uh, yeah, Zach Robinson is a player who's going to be replaced. As on comes Stamatolopoulos, greeted by the home fans as much as uh, Zach Robinson is applauded off. As we touched on about Theo Bear at half time, this could be the makings of Zach Robinson at Mullerwell. That could be the first of many for him. Well, I think that would have been the attraction coming to the club, seeing what happened to Kevin Van Veen in his six months. Kevin was always a good player, but Stuart got the best out of him, and then he turned Theo Bear around. So, yeah, an attractive proposition. You're civil on the halfway line, plays it square for Graham. Eight minutes left in the game. Mullerwell 1, Dundee United 0. Hoisted into the penalty area. Dalby chase it down. More! Outstanding from Louis Malt, the former Motherwell man, what a strike! And the United fans go absolutely tonto behind that goal because that is a strike of the highest quality from the former Motherwell frontman, Chesty Downton by Dalby on the edge of the box. The technique was sublime from Louis Malt, and Aston Oxford didn't have an earthly as it flew past him. It is Motherwell 1, Dundee United 1. That is a contender for goal of the month. What a hit that is. Brilliant, absolutely. But you know what? Give the manager credit for the changes. Give the players credit as well. Really good ball up to Dalby. Knocks it down with his chest, and it's a half volley. You're talking about maybe four or five feet off the ground. Malt hits it and it goes in like a bullet into that top corner. What a goal that is. It's been coming. You feel as if United have gained the momentum. You can't allow Dalby to control the ball on his chest in the edge of your box without expecting something's going to happen. But what a top-class finish. The man who scored 51 goals in Motherwell colours. Here come Motherwell again, looking to get their noses back in front. Caleta's ball in the middle is really well defended there. I think it was Declan Gallagher, and another former Motherwell man. Back to haunt his old side, but here come the home team once more. Ball into the box on the right-hand side, good punch from Walton. Takes it clear to Ubuchima, who just hoists it forward, and then Dalby gets to it first. Don't think he's going to catch the second ball, though, out for a throw-in on this near side. But Dalby's done more in 10 minutes than Van der Sander done in the 65, 70 he was on. He's been a nuisance, he could have scored, brilliant save by the keeper. He's knocked it down for Moult to get the equaliser. Good performance from him. The uh, Moult finish, uh, silencing the fans who used to adore him. They thought they were on the verge. Uh, that's a very cynical free kick and foul by uh, Declan Gallagher, who goes into the referee's notebook for uh, pulling back Stamatolopoulos, who had beaten them all ends up on the left-hand side of the box. And it's a free kick in a pretty tasty position for Motherwell left of the box, about four or five yards outside of it, and a chance for them to get a second goal, which uh, might well be enough ultimately to take them into the semi-final. But uh, at the moment, extra time is looming. Declan Gallagher probably felt he had to, he had to do that. Yeah, I just dragged him done. back. I think first of all, don't clear the ball. I think he's trying to let it run out of play. So he puts himself in all sorts of trouble. So an opportunity here for Miller from the left-hand side. Curls it in near post. Casey couldn't get anything on it. It's held back into the area. Comes off a United head, but into the arms of Jack Walton. So with five to play. Does either side have it in them to go and grab a winner in the 90? Or are they both... Prefer to just see it into extra time. Middleton foul there out on the right-hand side by McGinn. And it'll be a United free kick about 15 yards inside. And the mother will half, and you'd have to say that it's uh, United beginning to get their tails up here. The fans are buoyant behind that goal. Bottled it up for 84 minutes, that's what I have nothing to shout about. So the free kick uh, left-hand side. United have thrown plenty of bodies forward onto the edge of the penalty area, as in it comes away by Casey. B can't hold it up, and the United have it back once more as Ferry returns it into the penalty area. Up goes Graham, wins the initial header. And a break, oh, the 
player goes that's down. A dive. Yeah, I think that's what's been given. The yellow card has come out. And it's Ugo Chima who has been penalised as he latched onto the loose ball and his feet got away from him. Not sure if he really threw himself or if he just lost his footing, but either way, the referee has seen fit to show him the yellow card and the free kick goes the way of Motherwell. I've got to agree with the referee there. I thought he threw himself to the ground. It's a yellow card for the substitute and a free kick on the edge of Motherwell's own penalty area. Three and a half to play, plus stoppage time. It looks very much like we're going to have an extra 30 minutes to contend with here, unless there's a late winner. As uh, Oxford launches it long, Graham's header finds Sybil to just hooks it forward. Back goes McGinn, cool play from him to move away from Moat. Little uh, back heel, and it's now out with Coletta, right hand side. Coletta coming forward up to the edge of the penalty here, nudges it forward. Stamatopoulos tries to get it across goal, breaks back the way, and uh, Miller will try and send in. There's a big oh! save by Walton, should have scored, but Walton comes up with a good save, but he shouldn't have been given the opportunity to do so. It'd be uh, with a header from six yards out, point blank range, and uh, Walton denies him to the Motherwell fans. There's a head knock here, actually, the play's going to be stopped, but what an opportunity that was for a VA. He's got to score. It's on a plate for him either side of the keeper and it's in. It's a brilliant ball in, it really is. And his header, just knock it to the side of the keeper. Be a hero. Good save by the goalie. I thought Tom Sparrow was in a better position. He was behind him. Obi seemed to be backing away. He had no recognition or realisation of Sparrow was there. He leaves it, Sparrow might get a free header into the bottom corner, but good save, Walton. Yeah, almost a fifth goal of the season for Moses Obi. And... Uh, Rarely see a striker pulling out of a, an opportunity in a position like that. Anyway, here's the Motherwell free kick into the penalty area. McGinn can make nothing of it and breaks out to the left-hand side to Moult. Moult just hammers it forward, looking for Middleton. Zafkowski's there first. He should have been able to bring that under control, but Middleton has uh, managed to pick up possession. Zafkowski was slack there. Now it's Middleton almost at the byline. Can he get it across goal? He can, but it's cleared away by Sparrow. Middleton picks up once more though, left hand side, that's charged down and it'll be a throw in over on the far side. Now we've got a cup tie with two minutes to go. Yep. And the uh, United players try to get their fans right behind them into these closing seconds of the 90 minutes. It's going to be a throw in to United right down at the corner flag on the left hand side. And uh, again, Ross Graham has gone cross there to try and get this one into the penalty area with a long throw and there was late drama at the end of the first half are we going to have something similar in the second period Casey gets it clear as far as Doherty his volley's charged down Miller will go and chase that and it's all the way back to his goalkeeper from Luca Stevenson Walton goes long having just made that good save to deny a BA a minute or two ago United coming forward down the left-hand side, but good defending there. And it's knocked out of play over in the far side, and I think, in fact, I'm not sure, is it an offside that's been given? I think Paul McGinn was fouled by Glenn Middleton, was right. it? Paul McGinn wins the yeah, ball. Yeah, a brilliant tackle by McGinn. It's Middleton. Who it is. Yeah, it is Middleton. Bit late on him. Yeah, free kick certainly been given outside the penalty area to Motherwell as uh, the final you're... few seconds of the 90 tick down. Must be five or six minutes to go then. Well, well, physios yeah. have been on a few times. Yeah, six minutes is what's shown. So six minutes for either side to try and find a winner. Otherwise, we are heading into an extra 30. As it's flicked on by the mother will substitute down the left hand side. They come back to Wilson now. It's a, a good challenge from Ubachima as United managed to get it ball forward. Mother will pick up once more though, it's McGinn, slides that forward, it's a lovely ball. The B inside the penalty, a good footwork as well. Penalty! It'll be a penalty! It is a penalty to Motherwell in second half injury time. Wonderful feat from the BA. He was just too quick, footed for... I think it was Stevenson who made the ultimate challenge. And he's brought the Motherwell striker to the floor. And this is a huge opportunity for Motherwell to clinch a semi-final spot from the spot. It's 
brilliant feat from a B, it really is. Magnificent. Somebody's going to get booked here, I think, are they? Ross Docker went onto the penalty spot and blatantly started kicking it. Yeah, OK, there we go. So he's went straight for a yellow card. Well, let's see if that has any impact. I'll tell you what, a B's feet there, Stephen. Brilliant, absolutely. Yeah. There was a couple of tackles coming in on him, he just managed to elude them, and he's thinking, come on, give me a lazy leg. Lazy leg came in, down he went. Is it Lenny Miller, the designated yeah. penalty taker? Young man taking on the responsibility. His dad Lee's just across to the left in the main stand here. He's seen his boy score some good goals already in his fledgling career. He might not score a bigger one than this if he can convert. Miller scores! And Motherwell surely now on the break of a place in the semi-final of the League Cup. They scored two minutes into first half stoppage time. They scored two minutes into second half stoppage time. The fans are spilling onto the pitch. They are absolutely delirious as Lennon Miller makes it. Motherwell 2, the United 1. Yeah. You talk about having courage, you talk about being brave and composure in the big moments. Lennon Miller ticks every single box. There was no calmer young man in the stadium than him. He just stepped up, sent Jack Walton the wrong way. His mind wasn't drifted off. He just kept his focus, slid it into the bottom corner. Wow, what a terrific penalty by a young man. Ah, listen to this place now, brilliant. It's not been a classic, oh, far from it. But what an atmosphere we've got now. Great penalty, as Stephen rightly said. Keeper's right, Lennon Miller's left, giving the goalie absolutely no chance. Now, yeah, what a moment for Lennon Miller, the 18-year-old, to a second goal of the season. His other one came against Clyde in the League Cup, but that one looks massive from the penalty spot after a B was filled by Stevenson. And despite having dragged themselves level, Dundee United look like they are going to crash out of the League Cup unless there is to be further drama but I mean you couldn't write that script two minutes into first half stoppage time they open the scoring two minutes into the second half stoppage time they look to get what seems like it's going to be the winner well do you know what at that stage for the second goal it looked as if if there was going to be a third goal it's going to come for United they had all the momentum the game had swung in their favour but Jim Goodwin made his sub to had an impact Stu Kettlewell's made his substitutions they've had an impact so the game has got better as went on. The atmosphere, the tempo, the intensity, the nerves, everything about it. It's a free kick to Motherwell, taken by Oxbury. Goes long, won by Gallagher. Not forward by Zarkowski, out of play. They've played four minutes of the six allotted. There will probably be a little bit more added on after the penalty award. Yeah, these fans are streaming out already. How do you think it's done? Well... A couple of minutes to try and change that as uh, the man who looks like he might be the match winner, Lennon Miller, just keeps his composure in the middle of the park and plays it back to his goalkeeper. Oxborough knocks it out of play over on the far side. 94 and a half minutes have been played as uh, Ferry waits for the ball to be returned by the Motherwell fans. I don't think there's any great rush to do that. Left hand side there, Motherwell have the throw in, taken by Graham down the left, flicked on. Ubuchima will give chase, but he won't get there before Oxborough, who just dives on that ball, and he'll take as long as he possibly can to get himself to his feet, and presumably launch this one long into the final minute of the six. Initially allotted his injury time, I do suspect he'll get at least another minute. Oxborough, well over the halfway line. Mr. Markelopoulos tries to flick it on, comes to Stevenson, who head, held his head in his hands after just making that tire challenge late on that brought about the penalty. You come Motherwell again. Wilson won't get there before Gallagher, though. Gallagher back to his goalkeeper. Walton clears first time up towards the halfway line. Won by Molt, nodded down to Doherty. Looks like Molt's fabulous finish is going to count for nothing. Unless United can pull a rabbit out of the hat here. Going down the left-hand side, knocked out of play by Coletta over there. He's put a few good balls into the box. Coletta since coming on. We'll just be concentrating on defending from here on in. Seconds remaining. As uh, United have another throw in over on the far side. Ross Graham drives the ball off before launching it into the penalty area. 
It's flicked on at the near post. Mother will get the second ball to it. And then just not anywhere will do just at the moment. Stevenson is one on one at the back, but he's done well initially and he's won it back for his side. And Middleton gets it to Ubochima. Ubochima from the right hand side into the box. Diving header clear by Casey. It'll come back to Ubochima right hand side. Up against Wilson, finds room for the cross, swings it in, it's a dangerous ball, but Coletta's there, doing that defending I was talking about to knock it clear. United return it into the penalty area. Motherwell thump it clear through Casey once more, and forward comes a B8. Manages to hold on to possession, knocks it out to the left-hand side. Sparrow now, left-hand side, he just needs to take it to the corner flag. That's what it's all about now for Motherwell, keeping possession. Stevenson's with him, he is down at the corner flag. And he's lost out now to Ubushima, who just quickly gets it forward. Casey heads it back into United Territory. Sparrow and Zdravkowski pick up, and it's played off Sibold for a Motherwell throw in. Midway inside the United half. We've played down over 97 minutes. There cannot be much longer to play. There is no more time to play. And Motherwell are the first team to pick their place. That has in the semi-final of the League Cup after a dramatic late 2-1 win over Dundee United. Incredible drama in the closing stages here as Moses Abiyi came off the bench and dazzled Dundee United with his footwork inside the penalty area before being chopped to the ground by Stevenson and up stepped 18 year old Lennon Miller to add yet another feather to his cap the coolest man on the ground slotting it past Jack Walton the match winning goal from the ultra talented midfielder but uh, as Alan said it wasn't a classic but it did come to life in first half stoppage time when Motherwell initially went in front it was a thunderbolt from Zach Robinson from 15 yards out into the second half. Dundee United initially were slow to respond, but uh, eventually, after two or three substitutions, Middleton and Moult among them, and Dalby as well, they made a difference. And it was Dalby and Moult that combined ultimately for the equaliser, as uh, Dalby had been denied just moments earlier by a really good save from Aston Oxford, and it looked like he would grab the leveller, but he was to set it up as he chested it into the path of Moult, and as the ball bounced, he got his foot right over it, and he thumped the ball beyond Oxford into the back of the net against his former club, Louis Moult, to level things up, and it did seem like we were heading for extra time. The BA was denied by Jack Walton a few minutes before the penalty award, a good save for BA's header but it was a BA who won the penalty that was converted by Miller to make the full-time score at Fir Park. Motherwell 2, Dundee United 1. The Scottish League Cup. This is the...